2020 may be remembered as a year of political divisiveness and one of the most memorable national elections in our history. However, some of the most profound political changes happen in our own backyard every election season when we vote in our local leaders. Today, we'll be getting to know a little more about the new mayor of Gresham, Travis Stovall. Mayor Stovall is the first person of color to hold this office in Gresham and is looking forward to giving people of color a voice in the conversations that shape our community. We'll be finding out more about the mayor's vision for the future direction of Gresham on this episode of Community Hotline. Welcome to Community Hotline, Mayor Stovall. Before we get into the full interview, we want to start with something a little bit different, a rapid fire round of questions. Are you ready? I am ready. Okay. First of all, where did you grow up? Kansas City, Kansas. I have two brothers and a sister. Best advice I was ever given was success is a journey, not a destination. Enjoy the ride. Oh, I love, I love snow skiing. What's the best compliment you ever received? When you provide leadership, you're both fair and balanced. Probably dance. I just absolutely love the spring water trail between Gresham and, and Boring, helping other people. That is just at the core of who I am. I just love helping others. So what food do you find irresistible? Uh, lemon loaf. So if you, Travis, want to pamper yourself, what do you do? I eat lemon loaf. <laughs> <laughs> I would say a comprehensive future that just is inclusive. I mean, that's that's really my, my greatest hope for Gresham because I think that inclusivity is, is what creates uh, the rich diversity and celebrates the rich diversity that we have here. Well, that was fun, Travis. Thank you very much. Uh, now I'd like to get into a little more serious questions. I want to know, was holding a public office something that you've always wanted to do? Was that something that was on your bucket list? It, it wasn't actually. You know, I, I think when I think about kind of holding public office, I always, um, from my perspective, I always thought it was something that someone else did. Uh, you know, I, I really uh, wanted to be uh, of support to individuals that ran for public office. And I also wanted to ensure that I was engaged. I want to be engaged civically. I wanted to be on count on uh, not on council, but in committees and task force, so that we could help and assist. Uh, but I could, I'll honestly say that uh, running for public office was not on my bucket list. <laughs> so you were kind of the background kind of guy that helped out and made everything run. But you know, the community overall was pretty surprised when Shane Bemis um, stepped down as a Gresham mayor. He'd been a mayor for a long time, but he also had a suggestion of who he wanted to replace him, and that was you. So how did, how did all that go down? I assume he talked to you about it first. Uh, no, no, he actually didn't. Really? Uh, there was, there was, yeah, there was and, and not that he needed to or had to. There was no uh, requirement for him to do that. Uh, you know, I, we, he knew that I'd been civically engaged for quite some time. And I've, I've sat on a number of committees and task force. So he, he really had some insight into who I was as an individual and kind of where my purpose and heart lie, uh, lay at that point in time. Uh, but no, I had no idea uh, that uh, that was going to be the case. I was actually in a meeting when the news broke and I began to get a lot of communications uh, by text and phone calls. And I couldn't figure out what was going on until I picked up my phone and had to excuse myself from the meeting. I said, I, I don't know what's going on. And I looked at the information and said, wow, okay. Um, this is uh, something that is, was unexpected. Uh, one, that uh, he stepped down. And then two, he would make that recommendation. So I was yeah. actually quite surprised. Yeah, well, it was, it was surprising, but it was really a, a great compliment to you. So obviously a lot of other people agreed with him because you are now the new mayor of, of Gresham. So you're the mayor of the fourth largest city in Oregon, and it's in the middle of a pandemic, and it's a time of divisiveness. And how do you juggle all that? Because you also own your own business. How do you do well, all that? Well, you know, Monica, I choose, I really choose to, to, to be optimistic, and I really choose to look at the positive. You know, I, I think we have to recognize that we have some challenges with the divisive nature of kind of the rhetoric that uh, we sometimes observe. And uh, we have to absolutely recognize what's going on in the pandemic and the hurt and the challenges and the pain that goes along with that. Uh, we have to make recognition of all of that. Mm -hmm. But once we make that recognition, we also need to turn our eyes towards what can we accomplish? What can we be? What, what does the future look like? Um, and so that's where, that's where I choose to kind of sit as I begin to balance everything that needs to be accomplished. 
And we've got to set priorities. As a community, we've got to look at and say, okay, what's our highest priority? What's the next priority? And then start to put things in place and plans to address some of those challenges that we're going to face and focus kind of on those positive outcomes. And so, you know, when I think about the kind of the tagline that I utilize uh, when we were running, it wasn't just something that I wanted to develop. That Gresham Together was really truly the passion that I have for our city about bringing Gresham together. How do we make sure that everybody's included in the conversations as we move forward and everybody's included in the opportunities for equitable economic development and things of that sort? How do we bring people from poverty to prosperity? Yeah. So and, and yes, I mean, it's, it's, it's a challenge to balance all of it, but uh, we've got an incredible team that works for the city of Gresham. We've got, you know, a great council that I think brings some great rich diversity and conversation. And, but then we also have uh, phenomenal citizens that have spent years contributing to the very fabric of our community. And that's, that's, that's powerful. And that's exciting to be able to focus on that and understanding that we've got the challenges and the negatives, but I choose to be optimistic and say that we're going to bring Gresham together and really focus on what we can be. That's great. That's great. And you're right. We uh, Gresham has a very involved citizenship. They're very involved in in local um, the local government and and want to have their voice heard. So that's that's very important. So uh, you just recently had a um, planning session, didn't you, with the city council or like a work work plan? Is that right? Yearly, we set an annual work plan, and mm -hmm. there were 22 to 23 items on that work plan for 2020. <laughs> Uh, and as we begin to assess 2021 and the challenges that lie before us, we know that we're going to have a limited amount of bandwidth to be able to comp accomplish a bunch of things from the historical list and potentially adding things to it. And as you already know, we have to operate from a remote type of perspective and setting and a lot of things that we're accomplishing right now. And so as a council, I think the overall direction that we gave coming out of that work session was to say, we understand and appreciate uh, the challenges that our staff is going to face trying to accomplish a bunch of different things under this kind of pandemic operations. Uh, we also recognize that uh, there's going to be limited opportunity to accomplish a bunch of different things. And so we added a COVID response, which is going to require all of us to do things a little bit differently. And then we're also going to have to focus on the things uh, that really plague uh, our, our city and our citizens, uh, making sure that when we start to reopen, which, you know, I absolutely, Gresham uh, has a large dependence on small business, small and medium-sized businesses, along with some bigger businesses, but a heavy reliance on that small to medium-sized business. So we, 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 we have to start reopening our, our locations and our businesses responsibly, of course. That's absolutely the, the foundation of where we need to be. Uh, and so that COVID response is number one. How do we do that appropriately, effectively, and responsibly? Uh, and then we also kind of grouped uh, some, some of the other items together. We came out of that meeting with about 11 items that we want to continue to work on in 2022. And then what we're really going to focus on is taking this opportunity to, to get, do further community engagement as we go into the fall hopefully we have an opportunity to come together in person and have a deeper uh, a deeper kind of planning session that's going to develop our work plan for 2022 uh, but we know we already have 11 big projects to look at in 2021 uh, and so we really wanted to keep that pretty tight but in 2022 we're going to look at more uh, kind of community engagement and roll into 2022 with uh, probably, a, I'm going to say, a, a pared down plan to ensure that we can really truly accomplish those things that I consider to be the vital few that really help our community. So this year, what is it that stands out uh, among all the things out of those 11? Is there one thing that is stands out as most important to you? Absolutely. COVID response. I mean, because there is, uh, I mean, the COVID response and recovery are two, two different, uh, you know, tremendous focal points. We've got to figure out what we're doing now to support our citizens, our businesses, which, which create jobs. Uh, we've got to figure out how to support them now, but the, during the recovery. And so if we're not doing things that give support now, then the recovery becomes that much harder. So that's, that's a number one priority. The other thing is uh, our, our structural tax issue. 
you know, we've, we've for years have been struggling and every year we see a diminishing opportunity to run our city uh, with a proper budget. And uh, that's something that's going to be critical as we look forward. And throughout that process, you know, community engagement continues to be at the hallmark and the, the center of what we need to accomplish there. And how do we make sure that we're reaching out, doing that engagement, and then also how do we do a, a, a really good job of articulating and communicating to the citizenry really what the city needs to be investing in, both for the short, medium, and long-term vibrancy of our community? And no, that's what's critical. So I see, I see those two, uh, uh, from my opinion, as being two of the critical things that we need to focus on from a priority standpoint. And if you if, if you had observed the the business or the session the work session that the council conducted there's you know we had ever all the council counselors had an opportunity to kind of opine on kind of their priorities and i think that there's mm -hmm. a lot of similarities uh with the priorities that were referenced yeah yeah that's right well that's good because those those are kind of the foundation once you get you know everybody back working and things opened up then you can work on some of the other stuff i'm sure so that's correct uh, you know, this has been a crazy year, and uh, I know that you said you were kind of surprised by, you know, being told that you were the chosen one from a previous mayor. What what experiences in your life have, have prepared you for, to take on this leadership role? You know, I think we're we're in a, we're in a unique period in time. I think from a from a social justice and racial equity conversation, I think more folks are open to kind of the the plight of people of color in our country than we've ever seen in our history. And so that gives me uh, hope, but it also is a lived experience that I can bring organically to, to conversations and discussions we have, we need to have. Um, but when we do that with a balanced approach, we have to understand that uh, we have a significant number of folks that live in our community and we have to make sure all of them are heard and that's where i want to be at, i want to be at the center of that conversation to make sure everybody is heard everybody is listened to as we look to move our city forward so the lived experience of being a, a person of color in our country to add to this conversation from an organic perspective is valuable incredibly valuable at this pivotal point pivotal point in time my nine years on the trimet board has been something that has been in, instrumental in preparing me because, you know, even though the TriMet board is appointed, we still actually exist in a very similar rule set from an ethics perspective and all of those things that city councils and elected officials are required to abide by. And so that training and what I experienced there, you know, nine years, I was a, uh, I was the vice chair of that board for a number of those years. I also chaired the finance and audit committee and had great opportunities to learn a lot of stuff. Our budget there is about 1.5 billion. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, considerably larger than what we see here in Gresham. <laughs> and so I got, you know, some really phenomenal experience there from a perspective of that municipal government agency type of budgeting perspective. And so that's been extremely valuable. And one of the hallmarks of our time at TriMed is that uh, we were the only transit agency in the country with AAA rated debt across all three rated agencies. It's unheard of wow. at that level of consistency. And at the same time, TriMed was also the highest rated government agency in the entire state at um, just north of 75% approval. You know, so it's, it's, it, that experience was phenomenal. And I would also say that, uh, you know, I was the executive director for East Metro Economic Alliance for about mm -hmm. eight years. And so that's balancing, you know, private sector, balancing nonprofits, balancing uh, the four cities, uh, balancing, you know, the, the kind of the wants, needs of, of Multnomah County and Metro and transportation. You know, so that's a unique experience set uh, that I think it pre has prepared me well to uh, step into this role and be an individual who's going to be open kind of to the, the, the public engagement, the civic engagement that's critical as far as the uh, policies and uh, policy development and, and guidance goes. So tremendous opportunities yeah. to yeah. Uh, have training as it leads into uh, this, elected, this elected role. Well, let's not forget you were also a treasurer on, on the finance committee for Metro East Community Media for about 13 true. years, I believe. That is true, 13 years. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Metro East Community Media on the board, and uh, as you already referenced, the treasurer yeah, yeah, yeah. organization, which again, I you don't you don't spend 13 years on a board unless you really enjoy 
the organization and the incredible contribution that it makes to the community. So Metro East, uh, I, you know, it has a very warm spot for me just because of the amazing work that you do. Thank you. Thank you. And we appreciate your contributions so very much. So, um, what, what do you think is, just on a totally different uh, tack, what do you think is Gresham's best kept secret? I wish I could just keep it to one, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to name two. Okay. You, I, I'm, I'm going to take, take, take the literary privilege to name two. First and foremost, it's downtown. I mean, I, I, most people, when they, when they, I tell them, hey, let's meet downtown Gresham and grab a bite to eat. Um, they're like, there's a downtown in Gresham. And then they come here and they're like, oh my goodness, this is so cool. And it's only getting better, only getting better. I think all of the incredible development that's going on right now is, is impressive. I mean, so we've got a lot of cool things coming in. And again, part of this is we're going to see, we're, we're seeing some businesses disappear because of COVID. And you know, my hope is is that we can encourage other you know, other young entrepreneurs to step into those spaces, and start young companies, and start new companies and new ideas. Uh, and so Gresham's downtown is just an incredible asset that a lot of folks don't know about. Uh, I think the other thing that's uh, tremendous about Gresham that that I don't think a lot of people even just think about is its proximity to all things wonderful. And I lived I first moved to Gresham because. I was a windsurfer and snow skier way back in the 90s. And so when I moved to when I moved to Oregon eventually back in 2000, I actually specifically moved to the east side because it got me closer to windsurfing and snow skiing. And then I began to uh, look around the region and I'm like, wow, we are at the foot of Mount Hood. We are just down the road from Hood River, which is some of the best windsurfing in the contiguous United States but we're only 15 to 20 minutes from an international airport, you know, five to seven minutes from a north-south uh, north south interstate, I-205. Uh, we can get to uh, the coast by just going on 84 and then 26, we can head east on 84. And, you know, one of the things that uh, isn't in Gresham per se, but is here in East County uh, is uh, the Troutdale Airport. And I'm a, I'm a oh, private pilot, pilot. flying airplanes. <laughs> And the ability to have a, an airport, you know, 10 to 15 minutes from uh, where you live is a tremendous, tremendous benefit for those of us who look at aviation also as a, a, rec in a combination of recreation and the ability to, uh, to, to travel. Uh, so, I mean, the, the proximity of Gresham to all things wonderful is, I think, an often missed uh, asset that, that Gresham uh, has. I mean, and That's we have good the point. Columbia River. We have the Columbia River just down the road. The uh, gorge, the gorge is. Gorge. We have the Sandy River. I mean, the list goes on. Be, uh, and that's what I'm saying. It's it's proximity to all things wonderful. Hey, I love that. I love that. So you know, just to finish it up here, I know I you said about the citizenry, citizenry that you you know wish that they would have inclusion that that would be part of a part of their lives. If you could just bestow one wish on the city of Gresham, one wish as a, a fairy godfather, is there anything you can think of that you wish would happen for them besides the inclusivity? It you know it would be you know I think so much comes from understanding and tolerance. Uh, there's so much that comes out of that. And I would wish that we would be more open to understanding one another and tolerant of what, one another as we pioneer a path to that inclusive, inclusive conversation that we referenced earlier. Uh, that would be, if I had one wish, that would be it, because I think so much good comes out of that as we look to truly embrace in our community as a whole. Um, I think that would be just tremendous and phenomenal. Great. Well, you're, you're the first black mayor, first person of color in the role of mayor of Gresham and really for the whole area, I believe, in the whole Portland metro area. Um, and that's, that's kind of a big deal. I hope it doesn't put too much pressure on you because, mm -hmm. you know, that's one more thing. It's a, it's a tough time, but you have uh, so far started out with a bang. And I think that you have a great, great future as a, as a politician here <laughs> in, in, in East County. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us today and, and best of luck in the rest of the rest of your, your administration. So Thank you, thanks Monica. very much. I greatly appreciate the time. It's great talking to you. Thanks a lot, Travis. Thank you. Thanks for joining us today on Community Hotline. To all of our viewers out there, stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you next time.